This is Manola Dargis for the New York Times. On March 26, Dennis Hopper, the wild man of Hollywood, the easy writer of movie fame, showed up and got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And while the event was pretty silly, as these things are in Hollywood, it actually was also very touching because Mr. Hopper has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And it was very moving to see him with his old friend, Jack Nicholson, and it really made me think about Hopper's great career and his reputation as the ultimate Hollywood outsider, the man who survived the old Hollywood studio system and helped really create the new American cinema. One of the interesting things about Hopper is that he had a spectacular start, uh, though it wasn't really his first role. His first big movie was Rebel Without a Cause. And this was an extremely pivotal movie, uh, and not just because James Dean, of course, starred in it and then, of course, died soon after, but because Hopper, who was 17 when the movie production started and then turned 18, was really affected by, by James Dean, who he saw as a real mentor. James Dean was the one who told Hopper he should take up uh, photography and start looking at the world through a frame. And that's exactly what Hopper did. He picked up a, um, a camera soon after and started shooting and became a really great, well-respected photographer. And you can see there's a wonderful photo of Hopper actually reading Stanislavski's An Actor Prepares on the set of Rebel Without a Cause, in fact, at the observatory in Los Angeles where the knife fight is staged. So it's actually very important, I think, and very it was very good for him that he was going against the system. He didn't want to just be slotted into the kind of formulaic roles. But eventually he started to find his own way, often with a lot of help from friends like Peter Fonda, who helped get him uh, the directing gig on Easy Rider in the late 60s. It's really difficult, I think, to really understand how important Easy Rider was when it came out in the summer of 1969. And it made Dennis Hopper and Jack Nicholson, who stars in it, very famous. Hopper went on then to make um, a, an unfortunate movie called The Last Movie, which definitely has its pluses. But at that point, Hopper, who had, you know, who's been very open about all of his problems with alcohol and drugs was really spiraling out of control and he kind of disappeared for a while until he reemerges in Apocalypse Now. That film kind of then sets a template for Hopper playing a certain kind of burnout character and it's not the only character he plays but it really starts to show how this is someone who is really willing to push it to the edge to really show you that very uncomfortable space where other actors are often afraid to go. Sometimes it can be really embarrassing, but sometimes it can be magnificent, as it is, of course, in Blue Velvet, which is one of his most famous movies and one of his most magnificent roles. The very thing, I think, that makes Dennis Hopper so very uncomfortable for some viewers is the very thing that makes him so magnificent for many of us. He goes to that very dangerous place where you feel that someone is just about to lose control. And maybe they will, maybe they don't, but you want to watch while it happens. This is Manola Dargis for the New York Times.